How do you feel about the 90 day rule? What are your thoughts and opinions about car sex? Top three qualities you want a woman to have in order for you to commit to them. Do you prioritize your relationship over a friendship? What do you think about dating somebody who has kids? Who you be thinking about now? I don't know. I might have a list of like 10 women. I, you, know, you never know. Okay. That's the end. There's an endless amount of podcasts on the web that claim to be real and raw. And then you listen and realize it's the same politically correct bullshit. Show after show after show. We, on the other hand, are proud to be completely different. This is X the Script. You want real. You want raw. You want uncut conversations about relationships, sex, current events, pop culture, spicy red room confessions. If it's happening in the world, we're talking about it. And you can be sure we'll be direct about it. And we'll be having a blast doing it. Bring in the funny. Bring in the sexy. Bring in the loud and crazy. This is X the Script. And now your hosts, Asia and BJ. Ooh. What's good, y'all? I'm your host, Asia. And I'm your host, BJ. And this is X the Script. Script. Y'all, we are back in the building. Yeah. Ready to go ahead and get activated, get acclimated. Thank y'all for showing up and everything. Come okay. on, y'all. Showing some love and everything. Yes. Y'all. The okay. energy is right. Man, y'all been showing us some love on them dang on downloads. I appreciate y'all <laughs> so much. Okay, y'all. I know when we were sitting there looking at it the other day and we refreshed it, we was like, Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Is this real? My goal is for us you to know? have a thousand downloads next month. I know we just started this month, yeah. but a thousand is my goal, okay? I know that's that's a little ambitious. No. But I know I know our fam got us, okay? If y'all out there, y'all listen to this, okay, make sure y'all download these podcasts. Don't please, please Hell just yeah. don't pass us by. I'm telling you. No, <laughs> I mean a thousand is good. Yeah, y'all. So y'all been showing a thousand is good. Yeah, but, but we are definitely y'all. We are definitely seeing like the results of what we've been doing too, especially with the downloads. Yeah, most importantly. Yeah, y'all. You know. So what is going on? I don't know. Right now, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get my get my my, my mouth right together. Right oh now. yeah. It's almost like my bite is like completely different. <laughs> so every time I go I'm, to the dentist. So every time I'm talking, it's like poor thing. I know. My oh, mouth is so me, much I different. I, yeah. I, I totally understand. Even last night, I was sleeping and I was like, I moved and I was like, my teeth are just, they just completely different. At least you don't have a, you don't grind your teeth. I know. There's nothing worse than waking up with a sore jaw. I know. It sucks so bad. I know. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So many people do that, though. They don't even realize, like, why the heck their freaking face is hurting. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, because while I'm sleeping, I'm literally you know what? gritting the crap out of my teeth. I used to wake up like that. I don't. And then your jaw's hurting when you wake up. Yeah, Get up. I, the, oh, I used that to, is not fun. I used to grit my teeth, and I don't even know why. I, I don't. Even, I don't even know why I used to grit them. I don't know why people do it in their sleep, though. Right, but it, like but it just seems like now I don't do it at all. But I know exactly what you're talking about. Waking up and your jaw's hurting. Yeah, well, you can literally just teeth. be that tense, you know, mm -hmm. like when you go to sleep and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. I. I'd be curious to look into some some studies yeah. about that to know why people do that. But I've maybe, I, I do it a lot when I go to sleep because I always have my retainer in. Maybe it's due to like certain stressors in your life, it's things so that's going bad, on. Though. That's the worst habit to have is grinding yeah. your teeth. I feel like it hurts number one, but like when you do it in your sleep, you don't, obviously you don't even know you're doing it. When you wake up and that pain hits you, it's like, yeah. damn it! Have y'all gritted <laughs> y'all teeth before? My mouth hurts. This is definitely a question for those people that, that have gritted their teeth before. Yeah. But hey, did you hear about this this Danilo Cavalcante? I didn't even hear anything about it until you brought it up. And My thing is, though, like, how the heck do you even escape? Okay? Like, you got to go through about... 
20 doors before you reach the outside world in a in a in a penitentiary. They said that he climbed up a roof. Did they finally come out and say? Cuz I know that for a while they weren't saying what, yeah, what, they, has, what he did. Yeah, it had something to do with him climbing up the roof. <laughs> Somebody got to fill me in with that too, but he 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 really wanted to get out of prison. Okay, okay, y'all. I don't know what he got going on. Let me see. Let's so let's look crazy. into this story though, because I y'all this this is crazy. And and so last <laughs> night that they said that there's a possibility he's waiting until the nighttime to move around and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Like so, in the daytime he's hiding, and then at nighttime he's trying to make moves. Okay, right. which is smart. But you know, don't nobody be out there helping him either. Okay, because because y'all, let me tell y'all. And if, about 34-year-old Danilo. Danilo. Danilo Cavalcante. Okay. Yeah. Was sentenced to life in prison without parole for mm. stabbing a 33-year-old or for stabbing 33-year-old Deborah Brandau, Brandau to death in 2021 while her seven-year-old daughter and three-year-old son were present. He was awaiting transfer to a state facility when he escaped Chester County Prison just outside Philadelphia on Thursday. So he's been on the loose, walking around. They've been catching him on these like ring ca- or cameras per se. But he been oh, loose man. for he been loose for a whole week, almost oh. a whole seven days. <sighs> Audit, but they they've closed the schools. They're taking precautionary measures to try to you know cut off the yeah. the the supplies for him because now he has a backpack they say he has clothes there there were some thefts that were reported didn't they, in the area didn't they have like a surveillance uh like a surveillance video of him yeah yeah where they where they saw that he has changed clothes i He's, think i think they did say that changed clothes he has a backpack and they're like we're trying to cut off everything gas stations everything so that he can't wear like in the area but shoot i mean he they gotta, but they, but they, but they gotta do that. They gotta pull all the stops. Because, you think somebody would be helping him though? No, because you gotta be crazy. Because the thing <laughs> about that is that you know you have a lot of people that get locked up and do life in prison for like non-violent crimes, but this is a violent crime. Yeah, this is this is pretty serious. So this has to do with like you know just the everyday person that's in the in that county that could possibly come across this man. Yeah. So um, they got to do whatever they got to do. Don't they usually like have like search dogs and like You think though. Like they got helicopter. They said they, Asia, we was watching they, uh, They've been surveillance surveillancing well, the well, area. We was watching the other day. We was watching Oh Brother Where Art Thou and it seemed like they stayed on their track all day with them bloodhounds. <laughs> they really did though. I don't know. I I guess I'm not I'm not here to point <laughs> on, fingers. Man. I'm just like, you know, dang, how do you lose a whole person out of a out of a roof? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, okay, so he didn't go through the twenty doors, but he went through the roof. Like, yeah, what? he found a way to get out. Where's the watchman? I have no Where's idea. Where's security? It's usually supposed to be secured. It, <laughs> you know, it's usually supposed to be secured. It's supposed to be some tight niche security on people like that. How the heck did you even let him out of your sight? See, see, this is surprising to hear that he escaped. <laughs> like, like the the last person that I heard escape from like a prison was El Chapo. Like that didn't surprise me. Yeah. But this right here, it completely surprised me to know that he's doing life in prison and he found a way to climb through the roof. Yes. But he wasn't but he's not like at a max security prison. That's one thing that's one thing. Yeah, you no, they think were about. getting ready to transfer right. him. Right. So, so it the was, security's gonna be a little different. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little a little a little lax per se than what it normally is going to be at, like, a max security prison. But you tell me where you go to jail at, and, and you just look up, and, and then it's like, oh, I can go through that hole right there. Let, hold my stuff yeah. for me. Lift, lift me up. I really would want them to break that down and say exactly. <laughs> I really would want them to say exactly, like, what he did to, like, really get out. Because it, it's kind of— You know of, they're not going to give you that detail. Right, because it's still really vague when, yeah. when they're saying that he climbed some, to climb up, up to and through the roof. Yeah. It just doesn't. It just doesn't add up right now. No, nope. the, the scales just don't balance. But my thing is, is babe, it's it's gonna be okay. He's not even in Texas. I don't you care. You've been you, you lock been, your doors. You hide lir- your kids. You lir- get your pets. You lir- was laying in the bed last night, like babe. <laughs> are you sure you cut the alarm on? And I'm like, babe, did you get the notification right. on your cell phone to say that the house is armed? <laughs> I'm saying, yeah. And at the end of the day, if anybody comes in here unannounced. I will be exercising my Second Amendment right. Yeah, well, we both will. To get right. Okay, well, shoot. You know, I just had to tell y'all, if you hit in PA or that area, okay, (laughs) watch your back. Don't don't pick up any any strays, okay? Yeah, don't pick up anybody. (laughs) 
And, don't, and don't do none of that. Okay, forget your friendliness this time. Like, right. let them go. Just let them go. Any, any scragglers, <laughs> anybody that you're like looking for a ride. Listen to this man is off the street trying to hitchhike. Shoot. Like, do not pick up anybody. Yeah, you know. Yeah, y'all. Today. What are we getting into today? I don't know what to call it. I'm going to get into your business today. Would these be more considered as like personal opinions, <laughs> so to speak? Like we get these Some random questions. Like sometimes I'd be like, why are you asking Why are y'all asking questions? us that? I don't You're right. know the answer to that. I don't know. I don't know. what You just need to do what you think is best. Hopefully this um, will be fun. And some of these questions are also some questions that you guys sent us too as well. Yeah. Want to know us, wanting to know about each other, yep. or wanting to know about us, and uh, it's just gonna be like a a real, real nice little environment, a nice little vibe today. All right, let's jump into the questions. Let, let me do that too. What Y'all you today, on? A, little, a little, a little Moscato, okay? I, I see all them bubbles and stuff. <laughs> I got a little bit of drink in my cup. I got a little bit of drink in my cup. Probably shouldn't have put the straw in it though. Yeah, probably shouldn't have. You, yeah, because it's gonna make it flatter faster. No, not that. Yeah, you should have put it in a wine glass. You no, did you get tipsy or faster with the straw. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Remember from New Year's? I'm telling what what we gonna be coming. What's about to come out of my mouth today? I'm just saying, ain't, ain't no. You don't know. So my first question is, what type of lotion do you have on your legs today? <laughs> I'm just saying they shining again, babe. You got the gloss. Bath and Body Works. Bath and Body okay. Works. Ooh. The Sweet Pea flavor. Sweet Pea. That's what I use today, y'all. Ooh. Why you got to make all them noises and everything? All the all the men's and, and the women's that are listening, they probably oh, like... <laughs> oh, I, sometimes I'll be forgetting. Why you got to... <laughs> because your bath and body work, your bath and body is working right now. That's such a like a guy reaction, though. I... I uh. <laughs> I feel like that's such a dude reaction, though, to yeah. say something like that. Especially if you sitting, you sitting next to somebody like me that got these little legs and everything. That's what I'm saying. It, it, it make you want to reach out and touch somebody. And gloss it and everything. <laughs> the, the seat lucky, as BJ said. The okay? seat is lucky. Yes, ma'am. Okay, no, for real. I'm about to get into these questions, y'all. Right, go ahead and kick it off. Oh, yeah. Come on. You got to answer these from a dude perspective, too, Okay. And then, and then hey, I tell you. Okay, I'm gonna give you the real. Answer, okay, how do you feel about the 90 day rule? How do I feel about the 90 day rule? Yeah, I definitely feel like the. So the 90 day rule would be you meet somebody and you don't have you you don't get intimate with them and have any type of sexual relationship or any intercourse well, within the first 90 days. You gotta, well, you can be intimate, but you can't be sexual. You can't be sexual, right? Yeah, I feel like it's valid. <laughs> I feel like it's valid for the simple fact that the day that the day and age that we live in right now, I just feel like more than ever, I feel like a 90 day rule should be implemented. I just feel like that. Just the way that the people be moving these days and and how sex is, is such. It, it, I just feel like it's sex, so overrated, it, right? Like overrated and <laughs> oversaturated to a degree. Yeah. And I feel like you got to do whatever you got to do to like really like understand who that person is first. I know that kind of sound kind of sappy coming from a dude. Ooh. But Really though, you like you really gotta like know know these females out here. You gotta know who you're dealing with, especially if you're really trying to get like into a serious relationship. Do you think that you, there's value in that though? Like like you know, especially if you have intent on being with them for longer than ninety days. Like you really legit like like, like them. Do yeah. you think that there's value in somebody that's like it's, absolutely? But what if they don't know? Like what if they don't know you put them on the ninety day rule and but it that, takes about see, that long before you actually have sex with them? Like but, is that is that to say that the person is more valuable to you because you feel like they did make you wait and you had to work for that or from a from a man perspective? Or is it just kind of like, Shh, you know, I'm still going to be with her no matter what if we had sex two days I, after we met? <laughs> me, I, I think it's just, just going to make it even better, especially like meeting somebody new. I feel like it mm -hmm. does increase the, the value level. And then it also just increases like the curiosity. The longer you wait, the more that anticipation grows. I oh, feel like, I agree with I feel that. Like, I, feel oh. like it, I feel like if y'all get together and y'all just start having sex within like two weeks. Like real fast. Like yeah. real fast. It's I feel almost like, like you've already like given just, them everything. I feel like it kind of just kills it to a degree. Yeah. It kind of stymies you like, like the Ooh. growth process. If you if you stick into like a 90-day rule, it's, it's really going to help y'all build your relationship in so many different other areas that's mm. not even talking about sex. Yeah. That y'all gonna grow y'all gonna get a, a closer connection way faster within those ninety days but than, what if you than make somebody that would if y'all had sex within like 
you know, within the ninety days. What if you what if you are the or the are the rule maker and you break your own rule? How do you think you would feel about that? Man, I think you will feel like, damn, I probably should have waited. And and just and just that thought in your mind, like, man, I should have waited. But you can always like fix that. Like if you if y'all had sex within the ninety days, you, you probably would want to dial back and be like, okay, that's kind of just like take it easy. Let's don't keep jumping in this yeah. too early. Don't okay. Ain't trying to jump in that water every night. My only confession to that would be like somebody that. And maybe they're like, you know, a little less insecure because I feel like even from a a man perspective, if a man wanted to wait 90 days and a woman didn't want to wait 90 days, but she's still really into him, you know, it could go either way. I feel like you could either meet a woman that's like just a very sexual person, that that's just what they genuinely enjoy with with, you know, the interaction of having another man. But Perhaps they don't see the value in necessarily waiting because they already feel emotionally attached and involved with somebody, you know? So it's like, I don't need to wait for that. I already know I really like him. Like, you know, and maybe, maybe, no. no, And I'm saying it like, maybe it's just somebody that you see in passing. Like y'all have had some good conversations, but it's never really been taken to that, to that level. But I don't know. Like, I feel like you're going to either have a woman that doesn't really see the value in waiting 90 days and they don't really care about that. Or you're going to see somebody that's like, so he waited for me like, you know, whether it be 90 days or six months. That's what I'm saying. That's going to be the value in it. And down the road, I feel like that's going to be something that you're going to always think of. Like, yeah, we like took it slow. We re- we really took the time to get to know each other. Yeah. And it wasn't about sex. It wasn't about him touching on me. It wasn't about him rubbing on my thighs. Mm-hmm. It wasn't about him okay. rubbing on these breasts. And it had a lot to do with like what your interests are, what you went to. So okay. They'll go that song again from Biggie Small. Tell me what your interests are, who you be with. What number to dial? Yeah, there you go. Something like that. <laughs> so, I, I, so I really feel like that. I just feel like it just it just takes you know the spotlight off of like sex and it puts it in other areas, more important areas as far as like longevity in a relationship. Okay. I feel like that. Okay. You know. Good answer. Yeah, that's speaking from like the like the the good male perspective. But I most mean, men, I feel like most men. I'll be honest with you, most men, if the woman's ready to go ahead and and, and bust that thing open. Nine times out of ten, they just going to go ahead and do it. They're not going to be like. But, but, okay. And if that happens, like, if, so, if. Okay. Do you think that that's, like, why people aren't really out here looking for relationships for real? Because they already know, like, how easy it is to accomplish something like that. Like, nowadays. That's what I feel like because it, because people are so accessible these days, especially through social media. So they are already, like, talking and texting and sexting and. But that, everything that, that, else in between. That's huh? why I feel like the 90 day rule would be so important more now than ever before. So, OK, so a, a fair, fair, fair rule. Is it after you decide that you want to pursue somebody like, OK, like I really like him. And, you know, in your mind, you're going to just set 90 days and say, I really want to pursue him. And I'm going to see if he's going to be able to wait 90 days for me and what he's willing to do. In these 90 days. You know what I mean? I think that's a good targeted goal, though, babe. I think that's a real not, good targeted goal. No, I'm goal. not knocking it, though. Yeah. I, I do, too. I, I would agree. But I just say, like, it's essentially, like, you think 90 days of being around somebody of the opposite sex. I don't know how challenging that is in, in real dating life, for real, like, now, today. <laughs> I don't know how challenging that yeah. might be. I, I, think, feel like, I think it's more challenging now than it is right. ever before, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Because, because for the, you know, I don't know. For the obvious reasons. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Because people are so accessible. They can communicate in, in ways that you couldn't do 20 years ago. And like I said, you can shoot for that 90 day. But you know what I mean? If you fall short and it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's 82 days, like I'm not going to fault you for it. Go ahead. Go ahead and round that thing up in 90 <laughs> and, days. And make it happen. OK. Yeah. But the main thing is just it's just waiting as long as you can until you y'all, y'all have properly like really established something. OK. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What y'all think? Tune in. Chime in on the 90 day rule. Have y'all ever used the 90 day rule? <laughs> Okay, let us know how that went for you and and what you thought about it and And following it. And have you ever told your partner that you put them on a 90-day rule? Yeah, did you tell them that you were doing a 90-day rule? Because I feel like anybody will fall in line if they want something bad enough, and then as soon as they get it, they still going to be gone. There's a chance. (laughs) (laughs) A good possibility, though, you know? I feel feel that, too. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and and keep it in that realm right now as far as sex goes. This is a crazy question, too. Let me get a sip. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and get you a sip. You stressing me out already. What are your thoughts and opinions about car sex? Do you think it's something that's 
Do you think it's something that's needed in relationships that kind of like sparks things up? Now, why would you ask me something like that? I just want to know. I just want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Because we didn't have some conversations like with, with us being out and about, moving around the city and stuff like that, and we, you know, we have we have some we have some some places of opportunity there at times. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are your thoughts and opinions about having car sex? I mean, shoot, it's is kinky. it cool? It's, you know, it's not cool, especially when you get older. <laughs> like you, like I, I mean, I got a whole bed. Like, and if not, I can go get one. I mean, but. You know, back in the day, you know, that was like a little kinky thing. Like, if I'm being honest, shoot, it's uncomfortable. It's really yeah, uncomfortable. I, it's, you know it's, what? <laughs> I feel like you, unless you flexible and you and you got skinny little legs that can fit in between the console and the side of the seat to the door, it is not for you, okay? Even if you in the back seat, mm. the, the seat belt sticking you in the back, okay? Like... Or, or you got, or you got that big, you know, some of them older cars where they got like the 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 parking brake right here in the middle console. I think it's, cl- I mean, okay. And y'all stuck on the hill, and you pull that parking brake up, and it's like I can't even get over the parking yeah, brake to get on top of it. Cause the brake is is in the middle. Of the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like oh, they don't got smarter now. Now they don't got the brake in the middle of the car. That was just the one that you. Had. That was the one that I had. <laughs> Today, park break. Thank God, now, we, thank God, we wasn't on the hill when we went. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Good, good thing that we wasn't on the hill. I just, I mean, me personally, I just feel like that's some some young stuff. <laughs> I mean, I'm not into mm. that. I, I just, I don't feel like there's a need for me. Like, I'm just too damn grown for that. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just keeping it real with you. Like, if, if I you mean, think it can wait? Absolutely, it can. Okay. It's, it's not that serious, and it's not even worth the risk of being caught in public. Like. There's nothing more humiliating than the damn officer coming to you and knocking on your window to tell you to stop doing what you're doing. And then you then you got all these little indecency charges and everything else that comes with that. I just don't I mean, I don't want those problems. But nonetheless, it's like it, it wasn't hmm. even worth none of that for real. We could have just waited till we got to the damn house. OK, you can keep your little hot head itself. Okay. So you've been caught having together. So, until, so, until, so you've been caught having sex in the car. No, but I know you've seen it on TV. <laughs> I, I don't watch cheaters too many times. Okay, we know how this goes. <laughs> and then, and then, like you know, and if people see you doing it, trust and believe they looking. Yeah. You know they they especially if they don't spotted you, they like. And for those people that like oh, to have car like, sex, yeah. Number one rule, do not go to like a mall parking lot and try to have sex. Now, how would you know that? Lot. How would you know that? They have security that drives around the mall and they will pull up on you. <laughs> <laughs> just word of mouth. See, that, that's just word of mouth. Still, you still ain't said no. like, how would you, how would you even know that? I, I wouldn't have even thought about the mall parking lot unless not, you brought it up. I'm not even, I'm not divulging anything as far as any of my indiscretions or okay. anything that, that I've done, okay. but I'm just saying. Come on now, share your experiences. For all of our car sex lovers, do not, do not go to those types of areas. It please. is not fun. It is, it is not. But I see, I see exactly what you're saying too, because I feel like that too. I feel like, I just feel like, I feel I'm, like I'm too damn old. I'm too grown for that at this point. I'm just like, if I want it that bad, like hell, I just go home. Like we can stop on the side of the road and get a hotel. If, I mean, God <laughs> dog, like, but, but as far I, as just the car and getting in the car, it's just yeah, like, like right now, that's something that you probably just out, you've outgrown. Very, very, very youngish. Okay. I just say that you yeah. know, very youngish. And it's, I mean, some people obviously do it cause there's nowhere else to go, but yeah, it, but you know, you got some people out whatever there, whatever floats your boat, you know, you know, you got some people <laughs> out there that got, got, got like these big SUVs and stuff like that, that, you know, yeah. what I mean? that, you know, the back seat down there can roll out like a, like a futon or something. So. True. Okay. You get one of them little, yeah, 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 yeah. One of those little vans, the, the, car. the little Ninja Turtle vans that, that they got <laughs> the, the, the soccer mom vans. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Shoot, they be having the kitchen tables in the middle of the van and everything. The old school ones, you, yeah. Y- look, okay, you can set up shop. Yeah. <laughs> right up in that joker. I wonder who a- I wonder who out there asked us that question too. That was one of those anonymous questions that somebody okay. asked us too. Okay, I got another one. Let's go to the next one. Do you think that love? can overcome unsatisfying sex? Damn, that's a good-ass question. Mm, dun, dun, dun. Don't say the wrong thing. Oh, y'all chime in on these on these questions too, y'all. It definitely can. Come on. I feel like I feel like love can overcome sex. 
as far as like somebody just want to be satisfied with sex, I feel like really? love can, especially especially if you're with the person that you really, really, truly love and that you, and that you want to be with, because you know you can you know sex is sex, right? But there are so many different levels of like intimacy. Yes, you know. So I feel like if somebody is one of those types of people that you know that connect on a very, very intimate level, as far as like spiritually, mentally, even physically, where y'all not necessarily, you know completely fully having sex but y'all do other things outside of like 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 little sex games yeah things where he kind of pay attention to your body touch touch a couple of little spots and things yeah. like that Ooh. but as far as if he can't just completely like <laughs> sexually please you yeah i do feel like love can definitely overcome that like any day of the any any day i feel like it's all about like maybe what like the mental mindset of that agree. couple and, I'd and, agree. and how you really like think and how you really value sex because some t- people don't really like value sex that high it's not really like their pro like their number one thing or top priority that they just have to have in to a, have relationship a relationship where it's just hot passionate oh my god you making me you know you know you making me wet you making me oh, orgasm oh, like oh god you, you have some people that you know that that you know that that's okay with like you know, he can't he, you know he he didn't he can't go that deep. But, I don't know. You know I mean, okay. I guess it, it it just varies per person though. You know because I feel like if you ask a woman that it's gonna vary what what she says because I feel like some 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 people it is important more important than others. I think the majority of people who have like who are comfortably in a relationship are okay with it like love will will overcome like un, unsatisfying sex because you love them for so many more reasons other than that if i'm being honest like that's where you would be able to find an intimate a passionate type of connection with another person mm, so if it's right. not satisfying enough like maybe you can find other ways to be intimate yeah like and, and maybe that's like it has to in that sense, I think something else would have to compensate for the lack of, yeah. you know. So in essentially, I'm saying, like, maybe you're a great massager. Maybe you're just a great kisser. Maybe you're a great um, romantic person that really may not be that great in bed. But I feel like, you know, if you go over the top and you really... You know, try to that show part, your way. Like, that part may be more satisfying yeah. than the actual act of having sex. Right. Like, I feel like because because <laughs> the thought like, you know, in terms of a woman's perspective, I feel like that would speak so many more volumes. Just mm. like, damn, like he he took me out here and then we went here and then, you know, he came home and he did this for me. Like, Shit. you gonna remember that, I think, more than you would just going to go have sex with somebody that you would typically be having sex with, you know? Shit, let me take some notes. I'm, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> am I right about that? Like, I feel... And, and then you have people no, you, who are... No, you give, who, you, give, you give us some good examples as far as, as far as intimacy goes. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm just saying it's sometimes thoughtfulness and showing and just really showing like a person gratitude whether it be a man or, or a woman like if a woman were to do that for a man I, I feel the same way for them like to some degree I don't know yeah, because, be, because you feel I like can't speak from a man's perspective like how it, important that is it, for them. even for me if, if I if if let's say you know my woman wasn't that good in bed yeah but she, she but she still shows all these other strong attributes as far as intimacy yeah like I could I, like, like I could like I could deal with it. Like, yeah. like I feel like really, yeah. Be, because, like you said, what are you really valuing? Are you valuing sex? Or are you mm-hmm. valuing the person that you're with and the love that you have for them and the love they have for you? Because, like you said, if you sh- if they're showing all these high levels of intimacy, right, and and really into you and showing like their awareness to like your needs, yeah, then I really feel like it can compensate for like you know. For the physical, for the for the actual sex, yeah. you know, I feel like it, it can re, it can really compensate for that. But you got some females out here that are like dominatrix that that, that <laughs> want that want to be whipped, that want to be. Oh, that's a whole nother level, though. Like, th- th- no, th- that got to have it the, the way that they want it. You're not going to no, know because because somebody like that is going to find somebody that can match them. They they want somebody to match their freakiness. They okay? freakiness. Like, that's what so I'm saying. So if you ain't on that level to begin with. Right. It, it, that ain't going to work for right. you. <laughs> right. And, and, and like I said, they have they have men out you know it's men out here that you know they they have issues with getting erect or or really like giving their woman like real sex and then vice versa as far as women. Yeah. And I feel like you know as a couple you can just find other ways to be intimate and, and be sexual. Maybe getting like sex toys and the foreplay. You know, finding other ways to get off rather than just the actual intercourse. 
You okay. know, I agree. I feel like I feel like you're gonna have to do a lot of discovery, a lot of searching. That's, that's what I was gonna say too. Yeah, I I, I agree 100 percent with that because yeah. if there is like a lack of like, there's always a way to compensate for it in a in a different area. You know, like yeah. in so many more ways, especially like if you've been with somebody and you're <laughs> truly in love with them and you do love them genuinely. Because to say what it is, like. You know, there's people out here that's been been together for a very long time. And, and you know, show, you know, when you get older, like sex is not that much. It's yeah. not. I your, mean, it's your, not your what heart, it used to be. Your estrogen and testo <laughs> testosterone levels start lowering. Yeah. So perhaps, you know, you do what you need to do to get what you need to get. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, well, I mean, he probably, you know, and he's <laughs> like, shoot, and, and he probably he probably and neither is she, though, you know. Like the libido. The, she, she ain't as young like the spring chicken that she used to be. So, yeah. you know, like. It's and, just, and, and at some point, it's like y'all got, got to live off of old memories. Like, yeah. shoot, you used to break my back back in the day. Right. It's all good now. You already know. Like, there was once a point in time, like, it used to go down every day, all day, like rabbits. Okay. Yeah. Like clockwork. We was on this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like rabbit, Like we rats. Stuck to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, like. But. but <laughs> <laughs> it ain't that type of party now. Like, but I'm sad though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that's a good way to answer the question. I guess there's a lot of ways and viewpoints yeah. to that, but I think ultimately love will always overcome like anything. I, I think, yeah, love will, will overcome everything. Yeah. And, unless you find other reasons why you wouldn't be in love with somebody, but I feel like sex would not be the one determining factor that makes somebody just turned off completely from you and, and then fall out of love with you. And then they don't want to be with you because the sex is not good. Like that sucks. You yeah. know, I, I would love for somebody to really, really chime in on this particular question too. like really, really give us like a, their honest opinion regarding like sex and the lack thereof. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I know there's people out there. They probably, they probably not going to cause, we got, in cause we got some freaks out there. Oh, and, it's and, a freak. And, and it's some, people, and, and some of y'all out there that's like, no, <laughs> Hell we no. can be intimate, but no, I need him to lay that pipe. <laughs> or no, I need I need her to learn how to ride or, you know, all of all that. Of that yeah. All of that, yeah. Yeah. Do you prioritize your relationship over a friendship? What do you mean by that? Your relationship, like with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your significant other mm -hmm. or... Like, and say, for instance, you've been friends with these people, but even before. Before her or Before him. her came along. Like, so they've been knowing you childhood friend. These the homies. These your college buddies. These are frat friends. Sorority. Like, military. We went to boot camp to get, like, these right. These your ride or dies. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then you meet somebody, the love of your life. Supposedly. Do it, does that relationship come before your friendship so does it supersede yes. everybody else that you've been like lifelong friends with yes it's gonna it's gonna depend on like that connection with that person wrong answer that's a wrong answer <laughs> that's How, no 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 that, that's not a wrong answer in my eyes <laughs> Wrong thing. It's it's going to depend because like like you really? said, we could you know like oh that would cause so many problems. It can, but because I could have friends that's like 20, 25 years that I've just like, you know, we come out the sandbox together, and then I finally start meeting somebody that I'm really really catching feelings for as as people as adults. At some point, you got to make like a like like a you got to compartmentalize like your friends your, your friendships and then like your relationship. Yeah. So I feel like. If I'm really meeting somebody and I'm really into her, like I'm gonna really try to explore that and try to see how far that can go, like like that's just me personally, be just for the simple okay. fact that I'm trying I'm trying to develop a relationship with with somebody of the opposite sex that could potentially be a wife, that could potentially be a lot like a lifelong partner. So you saying okay okay so in saying that though like would you look to your friends for advice on how you should like pursue your relationship like to maintain like say you have these friends and then you know you go to your friends and you like bro you think I should ask her to marry me or yeah you know should I try to stay with her like and they give you this advice but you know like since that's your best you know your your really good friend and your friendship you know are you taking this advice or are you considering the fact that you know at some point because I me personally I feel like I should I, I will always put my relationship first before a friendship mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter like 
how besties we are, how long we've been best friends. Yeah, I, I feel like I would weigh in your opinion. I would consider your, your feelings and your thoughts. But the decision that comes with what I do in my relationship is up to me mm-hmm. and, and how, right. how I analyze things. Maybe, you know, perhaps, you know, you get the input and you want to listen to what they talking about. But, but hell no. No. Yeah, and- ain't no friendship because... Man, be, be, because that's that's your own personal life. That's your own personal space, and you know everybody living their own life. Because you know you ha- you have like partners, and you have like homegirls where where y'all might have been like fraternity down to like sorority, where y'all like yeah. really really been like really really close for like decades, uh, right? You know, but, but but at some point in time, it just it just depends on how serious you're trying to get with that person. But a friendship will end so quickly over a relation, like a friendship will end over somebody else's relationship, because yeah. especially especially, especially if they like, feel like you putting it putting your relationship. Yep. Before them, before and, the and then you start picking your boyfriend of like, and y'all like, yeah. And that's oh, what I'm saying because you, you have people, so much, because you have people that you've been friends with since the sandbox, right? People that you've been to college, right? Maybe like your frat brothers or your sorority sisters. But some people, I guess, perhaps aren't willing to necessarily take that risk to lose friendships over a relationship. Yeah. Like they'll let a girl go before, before you know, like they bros homies. before hoes. You know yeah. that that thing, like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that's an interesting uh, point that you brought up, too, as far as, like, you know, talking to your friends about your relationship and, like, asking them questions. And, like, and, and, and maybe something like, you know, where y'all all kind of, like, double date and go out, especially if you have, like, your friends, the you know, real close friends that are, like, either married or they're mm-hmm. in serious relationships. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe, like, double dating. Like, I feel like that really, really helps as far as I mean, it's a good way to mix it. But necessarily like in terms of like choosing a relationship over a friendship is is, I think, priority. I think you should always choose your relationship because once for the obvious, because you start letting people in into the relationship and they start infiltrating your thoughts. And then and then before you know it, you know, Mm -hmm. you might be persuaded. Mm -hmm. You might be influenced by those thoughts. And really it's the wrong decision. Like you can really let something really good go by the influence of outsiders, you know, but you, but you can read that though, because not everybody can. I I feel like most people can, but at least I can. Like if I have close friends that I'm, you know, bouncing ideas off of and asking them about my relationship, like I'm going to be able to read them to be able to tell if they have like some type of jealousy or if they're trying to come in between my relationship. I definitely wouldn't put my relationship above my friends, but like you said, you can also you can always like bounce ideas. You can always ask them questions. You wouldn't put your relationship before your friendship. I would put my relationship before my friendship. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I because I just feel like that's your own that, that's like your own personal that's like your personal 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 life. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like your friends don't really have anything to do with that. And you know, if you're leaning on your friends. To give you advice for your relationship, you know, that's a cardinal sin in regards to like your true relationship with, with, you know, with the opposite sex because you're you're putting their advice above like your own intuition. You know what this makes me think of is you remember watching that show Love at First Sight? Yeah. Married at First First Sight is, if you don't know, it's a show that comes on TLC, I think. And these people literally are getting married and moving in with these people like without knowing them ahead of time so they get married to them and then at the end of the show like six or eight weeks whatever it is they decided for whether or not they're gonna stay married right but this last season this guy's cousin was just dogging the wife right mm-hmm. like she barely even knew her and was just mad i think i talking. know the one that you're talking about yeah, yeah. and i feel like that girl it influenced really in- him yeah it, she really influenced the way he looked at her like i feel like that w- I don't feel like that was all of it, it but I feel but like that he was, was a, in his head about it. Right. Lot. Like, and he really let that sit in. And to me, it almost, I feel like it ruined them because <clears throat> maybe what she said was almost like he took everything she said word for word. Now, granted, this is a stranger mm-hmm. that they're marrying, right. but it is your relationship, mm-hmm. you know? So it, it, that's a prime example of like, do you choose your relationship over your friendships? Because I feel like he let that cousin just run him away. Like he was done after that. He, Com- completely, completely screwed <laughs> he his He never mind even gave the girl her. a chance, you know, like yeah. a beautiful girl. She was the, the, was she the uh, US, US, Miss America, Miss, somebody. Miss USA. Miss somebody. Mi- Miss Wyoming or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember what you're talking about. <laughs> and, and he was, he didn't, I just feel like he never even gave her an opportunity. Mm-hmm. So, 
but see, but see, that's but what that's I'm, a prime example. But, I'm just like that's messed up because she was a good girl, right? For but, him, but that's what I'm saying in regards to being able to like <laughs> to go to like family members or like close friends to like ask them questions about like your relationship. Yeah. I feel like when you ask them certain questions, you're going to be able to reach your friends and be able to tell if they really, really giving you like heart to heart advice Mm -hmm. or if they just really, really giving you like an opinion because maybe they just don't like the girl, you know? And I feel like you'll be able to reach. What reason would you have to not like somebody that you don't really know? I mean, and perhaps you do know them to some extent because, you know, if you've been with them, you really Mm -hmm. do, you know, you know of them, you know about them. I'm sure the friend has told you plenty yeah, but, but who are you to make a decision on somebody else's relationship from an outside standpoint? Because of the relationship that y'all had, like the lifelong relationship. And I, like I said, I feel like when you're asking like friends about questions about your relationship yeah. and your partner, I feel like you're going to be able to read them to know if they really giving you like heart to heart advice, something that you can really hold on to and be like, yeah, he giving me this advice because he doing it out of kindness of his heart, not thinking with his head because, oh, damn, you know, she taking up all your time. We can't do guy stuff anymore. He don't come around to see the football games. Yeah, well, that just sounds like jealousy. The NFL fantasy. You're just jealous. Like, like you're going to be able to kind of read if your friends are really, really, like, there for you and, and really supporting you and your relationship, you know? Right. I really feel like that. Like, you're going to really – because you know your friends. You know if they're giving you, like, heart-to-heart advice or if they just, like, I don't like her <laughs> be- because they're taking up all your time. You know, I don't like her. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I feel like it just comes down to like either you like them or you don't like. Right. Them. Right. OK, let's go to the next question. Y'all chime in. Let us know what y'all think about that, too. All right. Should a man tell a woman that the kitty is a little stinky? Should a woman let a man know if he's a little funky down under? Hell yeah. Really? Yeah. Hell what? yeah. I want you to tell me because that's something that can be fixed. <laughs> <laughs> like, but, but I mean, if I'm being completely honest, though. <laughs> Wait, hold up. <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, though, nine times out of ten, the woman already knows that. I don't even know really? why you act like that shit don't stink. Yes, babe. Yes. It's just like if you you know when you musty. Like a woman can, t- can tell if she's musty like that. Like if for you real, musty, for real, for real. you know you musty because you can smell it. Like you don't need anybody to tell you that you musty if you can smell it. It's the same thing. <laughs> I was like, babe, there's no way. I can't, sometimes I can't even tell if I'm musty or not. Sometimes that's why I got to ask you, babe, am I? Smelly? Do I smell? Am I don't, musty? Don't come ask me that because... because Mm-mm. That's why I be sometimes I'll be thinking about that. I'll be like, can I smell it? Because if I don't smell it, I don't think Asia that can smell it either. Oh, gosh. No. So a woman can really, really like know if she like funky down there. I guarantee you, if she goes to use the restroom and you stink, you know you stink. It it, it does not take a cold to know and it's <laughs> that, that you stink. You know it. You know you stink. So a woman, even with a stuffy nose... She, she know that she smelled down there. I can guarantee it could, because if, if something is going on down there and, and it is thinking, then, then there's probably more than just an odor. <laughs> just it, might, it, might, it might be a little itch, itch, scratch, scratch. There's something else going on and you know that that's going on, but I'm just like, I don't know. Like, am I, uh-uh, uh-uh. I don't even know why you would even open open yourself up to let somebody else smell something like that. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Because because I mean, it's just not. A, I would want to know. It's not pleasant, babe. If I, I would tell you. Okay, but you never told me that before. Because it don't stink. Okay, okay. I don't, I don't have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a funky penis. <laughs> I don't know and I hope not like because I've heard like people tell me stories about Damn. like him going down on a guy and it and it was musty oh and I just God. I just feel like the, oh I know I can't no way I can't swallow Hell my spit no. <laughs> but you know what though like to be honest with you like I, I would never want you to go down on me knowing that I hadn't like properly showered <laughs> like like just think about like, like like working in a warehouse and what you mean? working in a warehouse and it's like 104 degrees in there <laughs> and I think that I'm finna just come home and just say, hey, babe, I want some fellatio. It's, like it, it is so fake on the on the movies and stuff. How you be seeing them coming in from the gym and sweating and 
then they have this big make out love session on the beach and stuff. I'm gonna be like, uh uh-uh. uh, when was the last time you took a bath? Okay, even if it's been all day long and I've been with you all day long. No. Yeah. The answer's no. Go take a bath. What if I hadn't peed or nothing? I don't care. What if I ain't taking number two or nothing? Am I good? I, no. <laughs> But I no, it, that's just me. You need reassurance to be able to see that he went and did X, Y, Z, and you showered. No, I mean, I just feel like I'm more so just conscientious of just body odor of and scents and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, e- even to say that, like, hell, the air is dirty. You know, like if you walk around all day long and then we come home and you ain't did nothing to make yourself dirty, like I'm not gonna do it. I'm not. I'm not doing that. I'm, <laughs> And go in there and take a bath. Like, I'm sorry. I just can't. I can't. And it's not any anything like I'm just trying to be too much or be bougie. It's just, I just, I would rather smell a clean person. <laughs> like yeah. the scent from the soap or whatever. To, like, it's just well, well, for but, me, it's but think mental. About this, though. It's all mental. Okay, but it's mental I, for you. But there are some people out there that get turned on by, you know, male pheromones. Is that the right way to say it? Like male pheromones, like like your actual natural scent, like the scent that your body gives off, like the testosterone. Like That's fine. Some women like that. Like it turns them on to smell like sweaty balls or no fucking sweaty, way. Sweaty no fucking arms. way, babe. I can tell you. I can tell you. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Not I don't know one one. You're not into pheromones. Not. <laughs> Absolutely not, babe. Sweat. Sweat glands, babe. That's actually like like I mean, a y'all. That's if like you, a nat- if you listen to this on a streaming platform, I wish y'all could see my face. <laughs> Just the thought of that makes your, my face your scrunch face up. is scrunched up like to the T. Oh God! But, but I'm but I, I, I'll be honest with you, like serious, like like if you read like some sex books and no, things like but, that, babe, I feel like, like I would just be like, "Fuck, I'm like, getting up. I'm not like no. male pheromones, like female pheromones. I think I'm saying that word wrong, but that. That's like the natural scent. You know how people will put cologne on to turn on a woman? I, I know exactly what you are talking about. Okay, so my natural scent don't turn you on? No. Go take your ass to bed. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't want to smell no natural pheromones. Okay? Go put the damn soap on your body <laughs> and wash your you, ass. You, so you want to smell okay? a combination of... If fr- I'm going to smell it, then I need to smell what soap I want to smell. Yeah, because <laughs> other than that, I can't get with it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I feel I'm you. I'm sorry. And I feel like a man will be the same way. If, if I put a little stinky kitty cat in your face, you going to just go ahead and go for it? How many people do you know are going to be like, oh, your my... natural sin is just wonderful. Let me put my tongue in it. Just, it just turns me it. on even more. No, people, no, it's people out there that, that really have a fetish oh, for a person's God. real natural smell. I really can't. I can't, babe. You could have picked a different question. No. No. This is a question no. I got to know. I don't know a man that's going to be wanting to smell that, though. Like, and I, I guess, I mean, whatever you say, if that's what they turned on to, like, they shouldn't tell nobody. I mean, <laughs> Asia, sometimes you got to be warm in nature. No, the thing Adam is, and Eve. the thing is, though, I feel like even I don't I really don't know. But I just feel like for how you, me, how do you think Adam and Eve got down? Right. I, I don't know. I don't know how they worked that out. Or, or back in ancient times. Because because the damn Red Sea wasn't going to clean it off for you. Okay, I can guarantee you. <laughs> he, was, he wasn't going to part the Red Sea with it smelling like that. Salt water wouldn't have done the job for you. It wouldn't have did it. Okay, you would have had to do something else. Okay, they had to get some creative stuff. <laughs> They had they had to go get some water from the from the river and, and, and mix it with flowers. They and had to do something to come up with something with but, some Euclids and I can some. I guarantee you, Eve was not not into that. Put the daisies and some <laughs> dandelions and some water and stir it around. <laughs> and Adam was and put like, "Put the kitty cat in it. <laughs> this ain't gonna work for me neither. Okay, we're gonna have to find something else to do. You gonna have to put some flowers around it or something." <laughs> Cause that shit is not what that is for me. Real talk, okay? facts. I'm just saying, but yeah, I'm, no. Yeah, I, but I agree with you. I, I wouldn't want a, a musty kitty cat in my face either. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, I get the I, whole. Uh, the, the I rather smell like 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 your like your like like your natural <laughs> human scent, but it got to kind of be mixed in with like a little like actual like cleanliness, like a cleanliness yeah. product. 
Okay. Yeah. Roger that. Roger. You're right on. Right Ten on four. That, okay. Oh, this wine making me hot. Okay. <laughs> Take another sip. I'm trying to get you hotter. Oh, I don't even know. Okay. See. I'm see, trying to get you steaming. You hot. need to stop drinking whatever's in that cup. Okay. You need to put that cup down. Whatever's whatever's in my cup is in my cup. Perhaps you shouldn't even put the straw in there then. Okay. Because it seemed like you're getting there a little bit fat. What are three qualities? What are your th- Top three qualities you want a woman to have in order for you to commit to them. For me to commit to them, that's easy. Three top qualities. You have to be a go-getter. Ambitious. You have to be ambitious. Uh, You have to be family-oriented. Okay. And then after that, you have to be willing to really be able to, like, please your man. Okay. Like, to a degree, be submissive to a man. I'm not saying that you have to do everything that a man tells you to do. Okay. That's not that's not the definition of being submissive, but like being submissive to a man to a certain degree. I would say top three qualities of a man, definitely the ambitiousness is, you know, I want somebody that is that's that's not just complacent that is willing to go out there and get it and and really be on the hustle and really have the discipline and grind and and so on and so forth. I also would say a protector. Mm -hmm. Like I would want to be with somebody that I feel safe with, that I feel like would would protect me, that would have my back, that would, you know, that I can count on, that gives me a sense of security. Someone who's, well, two things. One that's, you know, one with like family oriented that actually is a leader in the family that like can be, you know, a great leadership and mentor to our kids and really be involved and that type of thing. And the other is financially stable Mm -hmm. and not necessarily somebody that would have to make more than I do. I just feel like someone that is stable and, you know, with their money that has control over what they're doing. Like they don't have, you know, loose spending habits that, you know, before I met them, like, (laughs) you know, perhaps good credit would be great, you know, but just someone that's really stable in what they're doing. They're very secure in their job, like, you know, working temp jobs or living with their, their mom or like, I would just want to be with somebody that has everything together, you know? And like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean I need you to make more than I do. Mm -hmm. I just want you to tell meet me halfway, even if it's not financially, like, Pick up the slack somewhere else where 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 we can balance each other out. out. Like right. I just want somebody to even to say that. Like I would want somebody that w- could match me, you know, in my ambition and in my interest and in my goals and you know, like that security, like so that we can have a stable home, you know, and more so importantly, just so that I can let go of the thoughts of feeling like. If something happens, I'm the only one, like all of this is going to follow me and I'm going to have to hold all of this together. Yeah. Like, you know, or if something happens to the other person, it's just like, how prepared are we that I feel like if something does happen that we might be OK, like we're not going to suffer because you're gone. Obviously, the loss, mm-hmm. you know, that's a different that's different. But I'm just saying in terms of financially suffering, like what our future would look like. Like, I just feel like those kind of things like make me nervous, especially when you have kids and stuff like that. You know, essentially I just would want somebody that's just going to be, be a solid partner, walk beside me, Mm -hmm. not behind me or to leave me behind because you feel like you're better than me. Like I want us to make each other better. That's the quality I feel like I can find in a man is somebody that can 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 match me on that level emotionally for somebody right. responsible. Yeah. yeah. Like the qualities, the qualities. Yeah. And just having I, a good person. I, I, get, I gave you three, but I probably could give you like five to seven, because when you start bringing up the credit, you start bringing up like the job security. Mm-hmm. Uh, even like you said, when, I mean, when it comes I, I down feel to like the, family, the credit falls under the financial stability. Right. But I mean, right. what do you think about like attraction, attraction, like in terms of physical attraction? Like, what are the t- like three top qualities in terms of physical attraction that you would find in someone? Like, if you see them for the first time or meet them for the first time, mm-hmm. what's the first thing that you're looking at to see? Like, you know, yes or no? As far as attraction, why <laughs> the first thing? Like, the first thing for me, I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna look at like. The eyes, and then I'm a because the, those are going to be the first things that's going that you're going to pick up on. The eyes is the eyes and the teeth, 
because they're going to be talking <laughs> and they're going to be looking. So it's like the first thing I'm going to be looking at is like the eyes and the teeth and then everything else kind of falls in place behind that. What's number three? Number three is going to be like her legs and like her body symmetry. Like what, what does her body look like? Like I can tell if a woman is conscientious about her body and is how she takes care of herself. Is physical attraction like a deterrence for you? Like do you think that's the... Uh, an ultimate deterrence for men to approach a woman is a physical, like how they look physically, like what their physique is in general. Like, do you initially, like I said, like, like think from a mature standpoint, I'm talking right. about a real man, like a real man that has right. everything going on for themselves. Maybe they not the best good looking man, but they are quality man. Yeah. What, the attributes first first thing that a man just really like okay oh yeah I, that's attracting me to her it's gonna be like the eyes the teeth the hair mm. you know because I, I feel like those are gonna be some of those things that you're gonna look at and be like okay yeah she keep up on that oh her hair is like okay yeah she 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 spot on with the hair physical attributes okay let me answer yeah so for me I feel like a man's fingernails <laughs> like fingernails and toenails okay. Just a man that has clean nails, I feel like says a lot about a, a man in general because dirty fingernails are just gross. I just get so grossed out when I <laughs> I see men like you see them at Waterberg. Like you'll walk up to the counter, you'll walk up to wherever you walk up in the mall. You might be paying for something and you see somebody with some dirty ass fingernails. Mm. Nothing grosses me out more than seeing a man with dirty Cause man. Because it, it, it kind of reflects that they don't even wash their hands very often. Not even that, but they don't keep, like, they don't even the take upkeep. the time. To, it's just that. And I don't think that's a lot. You don't have to go get a manicure to have clean nails. <laughs> okay? So, men. Okay? That's what women... Are, take note. That's mostly like that's most likely what women are going to be looking at, right? <laughs> yes. And, like, the the teeth. Mm-hmm. You know, the how, how it's the teeth for me, for <laughs> real. The teeth. That, that's why I said that the eyes and the teeth, like, like, I, like I'm initially go to the teeth. You know, the teeth tells your overall health to a degree, anyway. Yeah. So it's like I be paying attention to that. Like, how, uh, like, is she really taking care of her body? <laughs> okay. And the last thing would be, like, what their hair looks like. Yeah. I just, you can I mean, whether it's long or short. If it's not together, like, it, it just looks That's a mess. Me like, yeah. you didn't take time to get yourself together before you walked out the house. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not interested. Yeah. A guy might meet a woman, and she might be getting ready to get her hair done on Friday, and you met her on Thursday, and she ain't had her hair done in, like, three weeks. Yeah, but 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 that might not have been what attracted him. That might be a turnoff. Him. That may not have been what ultimately attracted him. You know, it could have been her physique, her body. It could have been her her nails. It could have been the way she was dressed, yeah. you know, her appearance in, in terms of what she had on. That just like, dang, she looked like a top-notch businesswoman that means business. Like, mm-hmm. everything about her screams Success. Success. Put <laughs> you know, together. And, but her hair is all over her head, you know? <clears throat> but those two things don't go together. Wait, babe. If, you can't, you can't you say that. If you dress to impress and you dress for success, your hair is going to be together Wrong, to some degree. babe. It, and that's what I'm saying. See? Your, your hair don't have to be pressed because, like I said, I could have <laughs> met her on Thursday and she might have been getting her hair done on Friday. And she ain't had her hair done in about two or three weeks. It could be one of those real dire situations yeah, right now. Yeah, okay? I, I might have just called her at the wrong time. Sometimes you you'll catch a woman on the wrong time, but you know what? I feel like those are the are the most uh, genuine and organic type of connections. Is when you meet somebody that doesn't have like their like okay, other than the nails. But maybe they're dressed like, you know, like they did just throw like something on. they just walked on, out of the house. And they just walked out of the house. They don't have makeup on. They don't have their hair done. They don't, And you still Babe. find some type of attraction to them. Yeah. Like, Asia. that's your one. But that's that, your one. But I tell you that all the time about me. Like, I'm not big on, like, the makeup. Like, I'm big on, like, the natural beauty. He is, y'all. I'm big BJ, on, like, this BJ, natural. so into that. I just like natural beauty because I feel like if you're just, if you're just naturally beautiful to me, Without all the extra, I feel like when you do put yourself Aww. together, then you're just gonna be exquisite. Like like you you're gonna be a masterpiece. It's like walking into a museum and seeing a Picasso. <laughs> you got a Picasso on your wall. <laughs> I did Picasso. You got a Picasso on the wall. Yeah. I can't. And I definitely don't like a woman that's hairier than me. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Oh, no, that's a really good yeah, point. Yeah, she's got a little too much hair. I can't go there. Okay. <laughs> 
And I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to be too like nitpicky, but I feel like everybody a lot of like men has a there. list of stuff, though. I yeah. feel like there's a list of stuff for everybody where, and it might include some of those weird, quirky things. Oh, let me see. I remember I used to work with somebody that he would tell me, like, like remember I was telling you, I, one of my dealers, y'all heard me talk about this before, and I was on the phone with him, and he was like, he's one of those guys that, back to this dating scene where it's like if you run into him like I feel sorry for you mm -hmm. okay cause cause he is not <laughs> interested I'm just telling you he just want the one thing but he would meet people he would meet these women and he'd say now nah, she moved in with me and I thought she might be the one and then you know he tells me a week later that they breaking up and he's like I was just so turned off because she had a mustache. When I saw her shaving her mustache, I didn't want to be with her anymore. I'm like, oh, <laughs> see, I feel like that's kind of nitpicking a little bit. <laughs> I felt like but that, that, but there's a level like 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 that's how, so nitpicky to me because all women wax their lips, right, to some degree. Well, okay, most women. But you have some, <laughs> but you have some women that got like a little bit. Then you got some that got a little peach a fuzz. <laughs> Then you got some that, like, if you actually, like, got a razor or clippers and you trimmed it up, but they can really look like But we all have hair on our face, though. Right, Every right, right, woman right. has hair on their face. Like, they right. cannot deny it. They can say that they don't. They do. I won't deny it. I'm a yeah. I, I feel what you're saying like that, too. So, you know, like, yeah. something like that. And I'm just, like, I'm asking him. I'm like, Charlie, <laughs> is she a good woman or not? Because that don't solidify if she's a good woman or not. Right. Because she has hair on her, has a little mustache. He a, said he a walked hair in on her, chinny her chin chin. shaving the mustache while she was standing in the mirror getting ready for, like, her but, day. And I'm like, well, why she, did that bother you so much? I what, didn't understand it. But was she using his shaver? I, I didn't ask. That's not my business. Electric razor? The fact that he said that she was doing, I mean, probably not. Nine times that. No woman. No. No. Okay. No. Okay, okay let me calm down. I, he didn't tell me how she was doing it. He just said when he saw her doing it, it just, he, it was one of those. he broke up with her for that. Damn. <laughs> and he, she was living with him and everything. That's a bit shallow she, because, because I feel like once you start moving in with somebody, you're going to really like see everything that they about and what they right. do to get themselves together. It's about the final product. Like if you have a woman that got like a little hair on her cheek, little, a little hair on her, you know, just a little, just a little bit. Above her lip. Yeah. And, you know, and she might have, like, some some hairy legs, hairy thighs a little bit. But if she one of those women that really, like, stays up on top <laughs> of that and she always makes sure that, she, you know, that she right. Yeah. And she always got it together. Yeah. Like, you can overlook that because at the end of the day, God made her the way that she is. Yeah. And it's like, come on now. Like, you got to accept her for how she is. Yeah, some features you just can't help. It is what it is. <clears throat> Especially people who are hairy. Right. Like, I was hairy. I'm hairy. Yeah, that's why I sat here and did that. I said, you need to move. You need to move. Okay? Okay. okay. We caught you on a good week. Yeah. Because you good. You you good to go. You good to go. But you know, it ain't always good to go. You good to go okay. today. I had to be good to go for, because I had on a skirt today. Okay? <laughs> nah, you are good to go. That's it. But, okay, let's you, go to the next question. Okay. From your own perspective, what do you think about dating somebody who has kids, like dating people with kids, what could be like some deal breakers? What are some things that could potentially be like, oh, yeah, like, I want to be with this guy and he has kids. And then like, then again, what are some things that are like actual like deal breakers? The baby mama is definitely going to play a factor mm -hmm. in that, you know, probably more than anything, like how that interaction goes, like how, you know, because I've heard people say before, <laughs> OK, I mean, if I'm just being real, like even just growing up and I would hear people talk about like, you know, when men had a girlfriend conversations, OK, if, you know, where it's like. I don't think he'll ever really, like, leave his baby. He'll always have love for his baby mama. like, right. And, and okay. she's always going to be the the go-to as soon as something goes wrong or she's going to be the one to step in or step up or he the one, she the one that he going to run back to if something goes wrong or if if perhaps there's still love there, he really still going to be messing around with her while he's still with you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I would have a lot of apprehension about it, but it's something that I, I would have to be like comfortable with. And I would have to just kind of sit back and see how their interactions observe. are and observe what the interactions are, the conversations, the communication, like if it's just communication about the kids, then, then who, you know, 
that that is what it is like there there's no interference to that but if i see you know there's interference and y'all hug each other before she get in the car and you leaning all in the car to talk to her when she comes over or you say you finna go drop them off and you over there for two hours several hours fuck all of that Mm mm-hmm I'm not. Is I, it, is it, it's just going to raise too many eyebrows, too yeah, many question marks. Yeah. I mean, and not just because like insecurities or not. Like, I just feel like. Is, is this your perspective or just like probably like me. women in general? That's me. Okay. That's me. Like, and it's not that like I would feel some type of insecurity per se. It's just more so my comfortability level. Like mm-hmm. if, if you can't show me and give me. That it's about you right now. Yeah. Like, and, and I can't see that and I don't feel that, then no. Like, you mm-hmm. know, but the thing is, is like, I, it's obviously such a common thing. And there is a lot of honest transactions in doing that, you know, parenting, co-parenting. And, and there's there's great co-parenting relationships, mm-hmm. which, which you should really be proud of. I yeah. think that's a great thing, especially yeah. for the kids, yeah. you know, so they can see that there's no bad blood in between y'all and but and I don't need to, to see that there's bad blood to, to feel like I'm he's not going anywhere mm-hmm. and if I'm being even more honest like I feel like I would even want to have some type of relationship with her too so that we can communicate and mm-hmm. and it not just be through the through the man like, you know like, like like third party right mm-hmm. like if you need to call me and ask me or if I can call you and ask you about the kids or whatever like call me or, 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 <laughs> you know? or, or even to the point where maybe y'all could like meet up to meet to drop the kids off right where you taking <laughs> on some of that responsibility exactly where you kind of like reassured that no he this is just a co-parenting situation that's it and they're doing a good job at it right. but he's really here for me yeah but you have parents like like i i feel like you know i have a friend who co-parents with She's married. She has, she has a husband and they have kids together. And then she has one daughter that is with a, another man. But that man comes to birthday parties. He is involved. He's come to her graduation like her, you know, just stuff where he and we're all, you know, they're all in the same room together and they can still get along. There's no discomfort. There's no tension like I just feel like more so than anything, like women don't want to be involved in drama, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. if if it doesn't involve them. Yeah. So if, especially if it has to do with something that came that that happened and transpired way before you even came into right. the picture, and they still kind of, and, and that's kind of like bleeding over into now exactly. your relationship. That's the thing is I I think it's just it's just you know you don't want to be involved in the drama, especially if that woman also has kids too, because then they're having to do the exact same thing. If if I were to be with a man like that, like I think it says a lot about what type of man you might have considering the relationship that you have with the baby's mother. I, I, was, like, wait, I was waiting for you to get around to that part too. Because, yeah, because, because if it's disrespectful yeah. and you just blink, like you just, every it's, chance it's you just, get. It's just a matter of time is, before it bleeds over into. Right, yeah. it's nasty and it's dirty and it's like, damn, you talking about your kid's mama. And, and he doing her like that. Yeah. Think about if, if we if we have a, a couple of like issues and problems, how you going right. to try to treat me? Right. Yeah. Exactly. I was waiting for you to get kind of come around to that part, too, because that was the part that I was thinking of. I'm like, uh, a lot of that's going to do with uh, like how he actually treats her and how yeah. he communicates with her. That probably over everything mm-hmm. is I just I need to just sit back and see how you finna treat and her because in the, in the situation that me and you come up pregnant and we end up having a kid. I need to know that if we don't stay together. Right. What, we ain't going to fall down the same. Right. The, what your interaction might be with your baby mamas, because. That that matters. Mm-hmm. And it says a lot about yeah. the person that you're dealing with, yeah. too. Do you think that it's like a turnoff, though, for, you know, mm-hmm. people to be single with kids, like for a woman to be like single with kids or even single fathers? Like, is there a different outlook of how you see that? Like, if you see a, a father that's a single father mm-hmm. that's raising a a, a, a a kids or a kid mm-hmm. in general and they live with him and so on and so forth. Like, I wonder if the attraction factor is different from, from a woman, because I feel like if a woman sees a man and, and, and seeing him being a great dad, a great father, like that's an eye opener, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> like it would be like, Oh man, that's how it would be wow. for me too. I don't think that it's a turn off. I feel like it's one of those things that you kind of got to observe to see how they interact. Yeah. Being a single mom or being a single dad, like seeing how they interact with their children. That'll give you a good barometer to, to understand maybe 
some things that might have happened before you came into the picture. Right, right. So no, I don't think that it's a, it's a turn off at all. I feel mm. like that you got, that you got to be cautious before you get into that relationship because obviously they have a past with someone else that they had children with. Yeah. So I feel like you got to really really pay attention to who they are, who their character is, and you know maybe ask them some defining questions. You know as y'all get to know each other regarding like you know things that didn't work out in the past and 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 what their outtake and and what their outlook is like moving forward with their with their life now that they're single with children. I feel like it's like a red alert. Like if, yeah. I, like if I saw a woman and she's like single with two, three kids and I meet her and we're dating, like my red flags are up. Not necessarily that she got two or three kids, but maybe two or three different baby daddies. Bam. There you go. <laughs> red flags. If you got them all with the same daddy, maybe it won't be so bad. That's but, true. That's true. You know. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Same with. Same, you know, if it were the other way around. Yeah. You know, if you've I, seen a dude that had six baby mamas, I'm going to be like, no. Okay, yeah, no. Hell no. Right. Like, <laughs> you, you're going to be one of those ones, they'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can call me, and then you give them the number, and that last digit is wrong. It's the wrong digit. No, right. don't call me. I'll call you. Yeah, okay? That exactly. part. That's big, too, in regards to how many baby mamas or how many baby daddies they have. Yeah. But at the end of the day, with them being single with children, I'm still going to have the red flags up. Because okay. I, cause I, you, you got to convince me. So the last question, let's see. Why do men not talk much during sex? Oh, I, uh. <laughs> I got y'all, ladies. Okay, <laughs> I got y'all. Why they don't talk? It's a fun question. I mean, it depends on how much work he's doing. Like you have some men that you know he might be on top and he might be, <laughs> he might be getting busy doing his thing. And, and Are they too focused on what they doing? That's what I'm saying. He might be a little too focused so on what he's doing. So you're saying you can't do both at the same time. You can't talk and say nothing because some men came because uh, he might be in the, he might be in it. He might be in them guts and it's, <laughs> it's just getting really really good to him. And he just catches a brain fall. He don't even know what to tell her while he's looking at her. I can't. And then uh... you have some men that you know. They might not be in good shape, so while they doing all, you know, doing their business, they can't, you know, their cardio ain't up. They can't even talk <laughs> while they doing it. <laughs> they can't saying? even get it out. They out of shape they breathe. They, they can't breathe. Shape. They out of shape. The only, only, the only thing they need to focus everything. on, only thing they need to focus on is breathing. <laughs> Almost like they're having contractions. So just focus on breathing right <laughs> now, so you don't pass out on top of her. But but if you oh want to go a little God. deeper, why okay. why men don't necessarily say something or, or communicate oh, why they're having okay. sex is because maybe they may I feel like sometimes their eyes are just focused on the visual and they just like looking at everything and they just can't it, everything is moving so fast and they and they mind get a, a mind fog and they just they just in awe right now and they just like oh like. Ugh. It's too. It's too much to take in. It's too much to even like say something right now. The overstimulation, so it just they might it say something. Powers your mind to they, say something. Yeah, they because might say something. Because I feel like women be talking. They might say. They might say something here and there, <laughs> but I, I feel like usually with the man I always kind of being maybe in the dominant position, putting in the work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot going on. It's a lot of tasks. I got. I got to be pleasing you at the same time. I got to be touching and caressing you. Now you. I got to be saying something to you to keep you in the mood. Yeah. You, you turn on, turned on. So. <laughs> I feel like you gotta. I feel like a man is trying to multitask a little bit. Okay. More than a woman is. Fair. Doing sex. Okay. Men, I'm, I'm trying to give y'all an out right here. Is that is that? I'm trying what to give y'all an out right here. Is that what you think it is? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay. What you think it is? I think the it's just why. more. I, honestly, I I feel like because you know I just think you know if you asking me I feel like maybe because y'all's minds are going to other places where I've asked you before you know like. Do men think about other I women about during other sex? Women. Okay. You know, like sometimes I feel like, you know, the quiet part of it is just where the fantasy part takes you, you know, and mm -hmm. you start thinking about things that kind of get you to a certain place, you know, especially when it's coming around to the ending and everything. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I just think that anyway, you know. For a guy, that's the reason well, why he's quiet. I mean, and, yeah, I mean, to some degree, I think maybe that's why he's quiet. But like, because he could be saying a lot of things to you, he could be saying a lot of things to you, and while he's while he's doing his business, he really think that he's talking to like Rihanna <laughs> or like Janet Jackson or Rihanna J, J Lo or Oh my gosh, y'all! You know, I can't with you in this dang on Rihanna. You know, you got, you got some guys out there that might be thinking about <laughs> Drew Barrymore while they sit here talking to you. Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Somebody. 
<laughs> Christina Applegate. I, you know, I don't know. The, the, I'm, just, okay. I'm just saying names right now. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just curious. Like, you know, why do men? Some men, I wouldn't say all men, mm-hmm. but there are sometimes, I guess, in, in general, where men don't really say anything during sex. Like, they're they're more, like you said, but. You, they you, focused. Yeah. They focus on the job at hand. It, and I feel like sometimes it, it, it's, it's more to do with trying to make sure that you're pleasing so, your woman. So why is it more that they're focused on, like, is it fo- focused on trying to, like, like you said, please the woman? But but in terms of men that do talk, what does that mean? Like, are they are they talking out those fantasies that they think about other men? Or, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what the what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, I don't... Hey, hey, pause. You gotta. Okay, hey. wait. I said that wrong, but that's a kinky dude right there. <laughs> of like other other women, like, is that what they're talking out, or are they really talking to you the way they want to talk to you because they just into it and they thinking about you in that moment? Like, does it go back and forth? Like, is it one minute I'm like, dang, I'm gonna. You saying all these things and you thinking about her, but then you saying all these things and it's just like I'm daydreaming about Janet Jackson or something, you know? Okay, well, well let, let's flip that. The girl, you, the woman, your might whole, your whole no, no, attitude no, 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 changed. No, 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 you don't no, 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 change no, no, no. up your. Let me look at you. Let me look at you real look, quick. Look how you set up. I mentioned me Janet Jackson's name. No, I'm come talking, on. No, I'm not talking about Janet Jackson. Okay, let's flip that on the other side. What about the woman that that that's sitting there staring at the man and fantasizing and thinking that he might be like Michael B. Jordan or. <laughs> Or, you know, it, you, you know, y'all might have been watching like a dating show early on in that day. And you know how they have like all these hot guys with shirts off and abs and stuff. Oh, and, and, my and, and, and then a woman might go back to thinking about that TV show while she having sex with him. I don't know about that. Yeah. I mean, like, I feel like I would like me personally. OK, mm-hmm. like here. Here's a, a bit. OK, mm-hmm. me personally, I feel like. When I'm talking, I'm thinking about things that I do with you, like things that like I in my mind, Mm -hmm. you know, not saying that like maybe maybe I might think about like that. But like if it were anything to that degree would be like, I don't know if I can even fantasize it because I'm like, I ain't even met this fool. I don't know him. I don't know Michael so B. Jordan. Not, so you don't really have that connection where that could really just get you off like that. Maybe. And I mean, like, and t- maybe if it was somebody that's like, you know, that I would have more of a physical interaction with, like somebody at work, mm-hmm. somebody that I deal with on a daily basis, like maybe, maybe. But like, even to say that, like, I feel like I'm more into like thinking about things that like I wanted like to make you, you know, to make you feel good, to make mm-hmm what's going on even better like in this present, so, in this yeah. present moment so it, it your mind doesn't take you all the way away to like that super fantasy yeah level. I, I don't know i mean that's just, but that's just me yeah y'all probably like you don't even be you don't, you need to expand you know expand yeah. your mind thinking because maybe feel, you know you might have a little bit more fun thinking about michael b jordan michael b jordan hey i could use some names <laughs> in, the, in, in the in the moment, you know. Yeah. So so I don't know. Like for me personally, I I, just, I don't feel like, and I feel like that with you. I feel like exactly. I feel what you're saying. I feel what you're saying on that. Yeah. Because like I, like if we're having sex, I like I couldn't think about another woman that I've never met. But but and fantasize and actually be able to like. But you'd get, get aroused my, from that. You'd get aroused from that thinking about another woman. Yeah. But then, so are you saying aroused. like? I could get aroused, but I, I I can't, I can't stay in, I can't completely stay in that moment fantasizing about another woman while I'm having sexual intercourse with you. Like it just doesn't. So what part does that play then? When you when you are like, at what point does a man think about another woman during sex with their significant other? Like, don't say the wrong thing. I feel like it's just okay because you tell it on everybody. I feel like it's a man out there that might be with women that they just. Maybe they fell out of love with, but they're still having sex with, mm-hmm. or maybe that physical connection isn't there as much anymore. So they kind of go back into the deep crevices of their mind to think about maybe like uh, a, a past sexual experience. Yeah, I think more than anything, I wouldn't <laughs> think about having sex with somebody that I never met. Like if like if we're that's, having that's what I was trying to say. Like too. like if we're having sex, maybe I might go back to like 
a, 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 a maybe past somebody that sexual you've had, experience right, that right, I've right. had sex with that like where I was super aroused and turned on where you know what I mean yeah maybe that but it can't be it's, it's not somebody that I've never like interacted with or never seen because that doesn't that that, that doesn't turn me on so you mean to tell me <laughs> come on with it uh oh, she popped her lips, y'all. Uh oh, she, oh shit, she about to drop <laughs> that the bomb. You gonna, you gonna get more aroused thinking about somebody that you've already had sex with before while you having sex with me. That's not what I'm saying. That's what you just said. I, babe. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't, no, no, uh uh-uh, uh, uh uh. Don't, don't babe you. Don't babe me. No, but what I'm saying is, <laughs> there, like, like there are instances where you think about it, and for me, it's not like when we're in the act of having sex. When I'm ha- in the act of having sex, I'm in the act of having sex with you and just you alone. Yeah. Like if if me and you are having sex, maybe I might think about, and I've told you this before. Like one of the things that turn me on the most is like when I think about like the first time you and I had sex. Yeah. Like those first. <laughs> 10 or 20 <laughs> them first 10 or 20 <laughs> like I like I might go me, back to let like, me drink to that yeah drink to that like I may go back to like 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 those thoughts but me personally going back to like somebody that I had sex with like in the past I, I can't see myself like doing that because I, I just don't have any attraction or any connection or even wanted to even think about those people like that so if I go back to like a past sexual experience, it's probably something that me and you did. I mean, I think women just... think the same. If okay. I'm being honest, I think women, I think it's fair to say like women might think the same. You know, I, I don't know, like if that depends on how long you've been with someone where it's like, Babe. I don't forgot about you. Like, you know, yeah. if you 60 or 50 and you've been with your wife for a very long time, like, I don't know where that place takes you now. You right. know, like, because right. at this point, it's like all you know it's her. It's, it's her you know exactly so that's why i say with, with so, us but, but that's where i'm just like does that where is that where the fantasizing of like mm-hmm. other women or men who you've not had encounters with come into play like in your mind where it's like you know maybe you're looking at like you know someone that's a lot older and she, <laughs> no i mean that respectfully you yeah. still it doesn't mean you love them less mm-hmm. Or that you're not in love with them or that the sex is not even good. It's mm-hmm. just like, shoot, I got to think about Holly Berry or something while I'm doing this now because it ain't the same, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. But obviously you wouldn't say that, right? Right. You know, so that's what I mean. But I don't know if that's any different for someone that's older, like as an older man or an older woman. Yeah, even. where y'all where y'all been together, like you know, yeah. where those years are creeping up, y'all getting in like y'all forties, fifties. Yeah, and like 60s, I just can't see and, and the physical connection, the physical attraction, the way she used to look twenty five years ago right. is just not how she look now. And so, and that. so, what are your thoughts into into going into the into that? You know that dimension, and yeah, because I feel like over time that thoughts or those thoughts will evolve. They'll change. Just people change. You know right, what right. you think and what you thought twenty years ago is not, is what, not you what you think now, now. At fifty, right? I can't say because I'm not. I'm not in there that yet. Age bracket. I'm not there yet. Oh, y'all chime into that. Okay, but, that's a good little but, but, juicy question to ask. But I yeah, know, like when you turn fifty-five, I'm certainly gonna ask you. Like, babe, you still? Yeah, but that first. What you think about now? <laughs> Who? Who you who you who you be thinking about now? I don't know. I might have a list of like ten women. See, I, you know, you never know. Okay. That's the it end. Might. That's the end. That's the end. Let's end. You finna cut the camera off right That's now? It. Okay. 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 No more. Okay. Don't say nothing else. Shoot. Don't say Did Shoot. I say the wrong thing? You said the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done, y'all. But yeah, oh, y'all, shit. that's going to wrap up this podcast, y'all. Episode 8, y'all. We moving right along, babe. Man, we doing episode this. episode number 8. And let us know down in the comment section Man. on, you know, if y'all want us to do like a part 2 to this, y'all. We have so many questions. I think we should because We have a bombardment so of questions. Yeah, there's so many. Probably an, at least another 60 questions that we didn't even ask on here. But, but... Y'all chime in. Please Let us do. know what y'all thought about these random thoughts, random questions. Yeah. You know, <laughs> hopefully, you know, somebody got something out of it because I feel like, you know, when you talk about stuff like this, it's so, you know, you can't go to work talking about it. Right. right. <laughs> you know, when do you get around your friend group to talk about it? So, so you know? this is like the perfect forum to like b- be able to bring it up and to be able to like talk about it and say exactly how you feel. Exactly. You know? So, yeah, y'all, y'all chime in and y'all let us know what y'all think about 
these questions, y'all's answers, y'all's feedback. Okay, answer our questions in the comment section down below if you're oh. on YouTube. And uh, if you haven't, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash the notification bell so you don't miss any videos from Asia and BJ. Absolutely. Make sure y'all tap, in, tap into all of our streaming platforms uh, and download y'all. Download and share. We need y'all to share this content, y'all. We are starting a new channel. On Absolutely. the YouTube channel, so we need y'all's help more than and, ever. And we own every platform. Yeah. Yeah, y'all. So, so yeah, definitely tap in to hit that download button, baby. Yeah. And that's gonna uh, that's gonna wrap this up. If ain't nobody else told y'all, just remember I love y'all so much. Everybody stay safe. Oh, yeah. Hug somebody, kiss your babies, hug your loved ones, y'all, pet your dogs. We're gonna see y'all next time. Y'all stay safe, stay up. This is Asia MBJ X the script. And we going to get on up out of here. Absolutely. <laughs> Until next time, y'all. Yeah. We see y'all sooner than later. Bye. Peace out, y'all. Let's get it. Hmm.